A ver, ¿qué es esto? Ich Okay. Oh, it's happening. I'm very loud. Is it too loud? No. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. So my presentation is a good follow-up from what John had explained before. I'm gonna talk specifically about Devnagri script. So John had explained some things about Matra and E sounds. I'm not sure if you're very familiar with that script but I will take you through and maybe you will have a better understanding. And to start with, this is a very famous yoga, yoga artist, I guess, and it's sort of pers uh, personifying the fact that when you design something, the so production and the design have to be together, foot in foot. It's just a teamwork. What's going on? Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, and it, that's a little bit like this ohm sign, which is the sum up of all the sound on the planet within the Devnagri script. That's just some, it's a very important sign. But let me explain you a little bit more about Devnagri. I should stand here. This is not working, okay. <coughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so the Devnagri script. So Devnagri word itself has a meaning. Deva is, means celestial or, or divine, and Nagari is a town. So that's, that a little bit represents what you're seeing now. And what the script I'm talking about is really um, happening in the northern part of India. India is quite big, it's a subcontinent. That is, here's a, a back cover of a, of a famous um, learning publication. Because India has so many languages, it's very important to teach their own people how to speak, speak these 13 official languages. And they also have nine different scripts. It's quite, it's, it's not complicated, it's just complex, let's say. Here, that's, um, that's an ATM machine you can meet when you travel in India, and there's about eight different languages and seven different scripts. I can name them, starting from top to bottom. So there's a Canada, there's a Marathi, the Bengali, the Gujarati, 
on the right hand side English, Hindi, Tamil, and Telugu. It's, it's a lot of various languages that are coming from different sources and do not share too many things also. But it's very interesting to see that the script that is coming the most often is the Devnagri with the Marathi and the Hindi language. So Devnagri is a real important script for India. It's the official one since, uh, since the independence of the country. And the government is, yeah, tries to standardize. I'm not so sure about that, but that's written in the constitution. <laughs> yeah, and that's a lot of people using also the script. So not just in India, but also in Nepal. And the user globally around the world is around 500, uh, 500 million. It's quite big, and I just did a quick comparison with Greece, for example, which also has its own script as a country. And yeah, it's just, yeah, it's a big gap in between the two. And what I want also to stress is that there's not so many Devnagri typefaces, and but there's nevertheless a lot of users or potential users. So that's what also the Devnagri script is looking like. Um, that's uh, an extract from a calligraphy page. Cannot really pronounce the title, but I'll let you read. And if we zoom in, we can see that, yeah, sorry, the resolution is not really good, but we can see that everything is very blocky. There's no spaces in between words. Um, that's really the old style of writing. And of course, along, along technical evolution or along uses, the script has evolved. If you travel to India now, that's mostly what you're going to see. It's very colorful, it's very lively, it's very free and bouncy. And bouncy yeah. And here, when I see this picture, I can tell myself, oh yeah, I'm probably somewhere in Mumbai because of this letter, which is a localization for the Hindi shape, which is the one in white, the typographical shape. Also, what is interesting in this sign is the fact that here, we can see that there's a conjunct here, which is a combination of two consonants together. And uh, the first letter should be blending into the second one, but it's just not happening like, like this example here on the right hand side. And that's probably the legacy of hot metal type, and people are still reproducing that within lettering when, when there's actually no restriction. And so there's a lot of things that need to be done and re explained over there, I think. It's just a matter of also bringing so good typefaces within mistakes and people will, will have a better understanding of their own script because of course they understand it also. It's a little bit tricky to know how much, how much things can be destroyed or reconstructed. And that's how people are writing. It's quite difficult for me to read this, but I believe that if you're just using every day, that's fine. And things are, like I said, things are very, um, are maybe complex within Devnagri, but not complicated. Here it's, um, it's just a little diagram to explain how the sounds are organized, and everything is also organized within the position of, of uh, how can I say, where the sound is created within your mouse. And here, so I don't have a pointer, but. Here you can see that there's different kind of ka, different kind of ja, different kind of da, and everything is organized according yeah, to the localization, to the look, to the localization within your mouth. So if it's with your lips, your teeth, your palate, etc. For me, it's really abstract all these sounds because I'm French. I hear very well the French sounds, not necessarily these Indian sounds, but. I found this uh, application, this website on the web that actually shows you and makes you hear all the different sounds. Ah. Is it on? No, it's not working. 
So, okay, sorry. I cannot show you this short video, but it's quite good. <laughs> you can hear all the sounds that a mouse could do. That's really too bad we can hear. Anyway, I really suggest you to go to go on this website, it's really good. <laughs> yeah, I can do that, yeah. I don't know. I can embrace my computer. Uh, do you want to help me? You can hear it, go just go close. Is this one? I think it's very funny, so that's good. That you can Play music. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, the voice is a music instrument. Okay, enough. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> also, uh, yeah. So the Defnagri basic set. I quickly like. Yeah, I don't think we saw that previously. So that's a typical page of with the ductus of all the letters, how to learn, how to write. And there's different models, of course. This is just one of them. But that is a basic set of Devnagri. And on the very top line, you can see the independent vowels. So these vowels are only going to appear at the beginning of a word, never within. When a vowel is happening within a word, they will turn to dependent vowels, so the third group of letters. Um, and those can be positioned before, after, above, or below the consonant. In the middle, you have the big group of consonants. Those are single, simple. Of course, they can be mixed together to create conjunct, a little bit like what you've seen before with John. And at the bottom, you also have the figures, which are also important. Well, both systems, our system and this Indian system is used over there, so both are important to have. Those are the very basic shapes that one could suggest when designing a Devnagri typeface from scratch. And here are the conjuncts. So John, so John was showing some conjuncts before, but that were probably much more in that style. But things can be also different because uh, a conjunct can also be vertical, like here. Or the shape can be also very different from its base cliff like uh, the second and third on top, nothing related with a base, with a base cliff. And these conjuncts can, can be very numerous within a typeface. Here I'm explaining you how things are working. So on the very top, that's what you get, uh, that's your final result. And to get this, you have to input this sequence of cliffs. So there's very little um, graphic um, connection between the two. So Shri, that's what it says. And here that's much more simple, uh, simple combination. One thing also I forgot to say is this sign is very important. It's not a sign that, will, that you will necessarily see in a typeface, just sometimes. That's called a halant, and this glyph is killing is just gluing the consonant together, and it's killing the inherent vowel within every consonant. And here it's a simple mark positioning, because the E thing that is, is, that is going on top of the stem is also working from with the matras that are happening before, but also with the matras that are happening after the consonant. Um, because I am working for monotype, uh, I had the chance to see the development of a new typeface, a typeface that I've been developed a long time ago, and I thought it would be a good thread to explain how the technological evolution had a great influence on the design of a typeface. And I would like to show you the brief history of Linotype Devnagri. 
It all started back in India in 1933, when Linotype sent their first machine to India, and Harry Goville was commissioned to design the first, uh, well, a typeface in Devnagri for this machine specifically. Here that's the specimen. You can find the specimen online also. Um, John Hudson had uh, uploaded it. It's quite interesting because you can see it's just a manual how to use a machine and how to use a typeface. So both are very tightly connected. Um, here we can have a make a zoom onto the keyboard. Oh, special effect. Ooh. Yeah. And at this time, because of course the character set was greatly limited, we couldn't have all these various combinations of conjuncts, so things had to be half form. A half form is just a regular consonant of Devnagri, but its right hand side is going to be chopped off. So it will be, so this uh, half form could uh, be stuck onto the next consonant to create a conjunct. So basically, the keyboard here is mostly conjunct, uh, sorry, half forms. And that's how things were designed at that time. So more half forms. So very mechanical and very, yeah, um, it was a piece of yeah, engineering that was very important at that time. And here I'm comparing uh, different conjuncts that were available at that time. Nirnaya Sagar is a foundry that was based in Mumbai. Um, uh, and then Monotype also had a typeface at that time and Linotype. And it's interesting to see how the um, yeah, the conjuncts are not shaped the same way again. So for Nirnaya Sagar, they were doing handset typography. And I guess I guess they I guess they look I guess the way they were looking at the type was closer, was probably closer to the reality, maybe. And monotype and linotype were uh, stressed with technical limitation. So therefore, the conjuncts became more horizontal. That's a little bit my guess. But the typeface are nevertheless quite similar if you look at the print uh, example on the side. 40 years later, roughly, uh, Matthew Carter was commissioned by uh, Walter Tracy to uh, redesign this typeface for the photo typesetting um, for the uh, photo typesetting technology. Here you can see the two weights, light and bold. That's how traditionally Devnagri were designed for light and bold weight, no regular. That's uh, one of the designs from Matthew Carter. And on the right hand side, you can see the evolution from the hot metal type to photo typesetting. The difference is maybe, the, maybe I guess that it, some technical limitation were, were, um, were more flexible, so things were more possible, and, and it was okay to have a vertical conjuncts. Some testing. A few years later, Fiona Ross was hired also by Monotype. And uh, she's been working on the Seartronic 200 machine. And first of all, with, um, with, um, with someone else. I cannot see my notes, but I, will, I can tell you later. Uh, she was <laughs> working with someone to develop this keyboard. That's a phonetic keyboard. So before, as you've seen for the previous machine, things were um, you would see on the keyboard what you type. Here, you see the sound directly. So that was a big step to try to change your input, how you input the Devnagri text with your keyboard. And apparently, I talked with Fiona, and she was telling me that, yeah, at first, users in India were not so happy with the system. I guess that's because it's changing. But after two or three weeks, they got used to it, and they loved it. And they and they cannot do without it anymore. They prefer the phonetic because it makes much more sense. And Fiona was also hired to look at specific conjunct and try to fix little mistakes. So um, try to improve basically the design more than mistakes. 
So here on the left hand side, that's Matthew Carter design. And you can see that the top, the bottom consonant is not, is not stuck onto the top one, and it is better to actually stick it. And also with this new uh, machine, the Airtronic, the mark positioning became a lot easier because you could play with your X and Y position, which you couldn't do necessarily before, or it was much more approximative, and it became a lot, um, a lot much more precise, basically. And recently, a new adaptation of the typeface has been designed by uh, Revived by Gunnar Williamson. Ben here in the audience was uh, was the was the engineer of this typeface, and Fiona was consulting also. And that's a new that's a new range of weight. And now, because there's less and less limitation, we are able to design much more weights, but also much more conjunct. Because why having half forms when it's sort of a fallback solution? especially for a typeface of this kind, which is for long text. So um, things are getting better, I would say, for the Vinagre type. But I would like to uh, yeah, introduce you to the few challenges and funny stuff that could happen during the production of a... Oh, yeah, during the production of how things look when it's not working, basically. So I stumbled onto this picture online, and I think that's a little bit sad for this lady, with a huge tattoo on her side, but I guess the tattoo artist forgot to turn on the Adobe World Composer, so it's just not happening. And it's really bad, it's really big, I mean, I don't know. So, yeah, too ha there's too many highlands here. It should look like this, basically. It's really a bummer. And that's how a newspaper is looking like in India. That's um, a student from Reading had sent me this, Tanika. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit crazy. Um, things are all over the place. I also should state that uh, the linotype Devnagri typeface hasn't been on sale for roughly 20 years, 30 years. So, but nevertheless, people are using it, so we're not sure exactly how, but it's happening. And things go very wild, extreme modification. So I guess that once India will get the variable fonts, things are going to go very wild. But yeah. And here there's little problems, because I guess that's the thing. If you don't, if you use a font that got copied over and over, I guess the production within is completely broken. Things are just not happening. So here, that's just a few examples from this page. And yeah, a conjunct that is probably common, ja and ya together, it's just not happening in the newspaper. The mark positioning is broken, and the matra e, like John explained, is just also not happening. So it feels like we're working with a digital typeface, but we're back into the hot metal time. It's weird. Also, yeah, that's a picture I took the first time I traveled to India, and uh, I knew that Fiona and John Hudson and Tim Ho uh, Holloway had designed this typeface for Vodafone. And I was very surprised to see these two posters next to each other. One has a typeface, the one on the left, the one on the right doesn't have it. So. Education is, again, very important. We have to explain to the designer how to use things and also to explain there's maybe a typeface that you can use, maybe for your branding. But things like this are also happening in Europe. It's not, it's not, it's not specific to the Devnagri script. And that's a typeface, which I found very, very, very good. Yeah, other stuff that could go wrong. You don't see your typeface. And the rendering seems to be a real problem. This morning I was receiving this message from my cousin. I don't even see what she told me. It's just like question mark. And it's just very often this way. Like here, an email, I have a question mark. And the rendering is very important. And just to be sure that my typefaces are working, I use this very simple tool called the font dragger. Here I'm on the BBC website, so I have a Hindi text. 
the BBC website is using Mangol from Microsoft. And I'm dragging a phone just to see if things are working. And here I picked uh, Notosan Tefnagri, that was a collaboration between Monotype and Google, and it's work. It's, it is working. It works. It's nice. And yeah, I would like to talk a little bit about shaping engine, just a little bit to briefly sum up what's going on. So there's many of them, and I they don't seem to all work exactly the same way. So the World Ready Composer is uh, the engine you can access within InDesign. It's very important. Otherwise, your Arabic text, your Devnagri text, your Thai text, it's just going to be broken if you don't turn this feature on. Uh, Uniscribe uh, was the engine of Microsoft, but slowly things are shifted towards direct write. Apple is using the core text by default, so you don't need to do anything. You will see your text rendered properly most of the time. And Hardfuss is an open source engine that Firefox is using. So that's how things are organized within your production file. So you have different tags for languages and script. Here I'm just talking about the dev2, which is the very latest tag for Devnagri. And you have to input your different languages because, of course, Devnagri is used by different languages. And here on the right hand side, that's just uh, the order of all the different features you have to input inside your typeface. I've made a note here to show where the reordering of the vowels is happening. Um, I could go through all these features, but maybe it's better to read the Microsoft website. It's all explained. It's very easy, actually. And yeah, and uh, things are just evolving. Like I said before, within Linotype Devnagri uh, machines, like, yeah, the evolution of the technology is very important. So before we had the Deva tag, now we also have the Dev2, and things are just getting better. You nevertheless have to be backward compatible. So. Now any typeface will support both Deva and Dev2. But things are, in any case, moving forward, and we try to be a little bit more clever about production. This is, for example, one of the differences between the two tags. So the Rakar, the Rakar is a small mark under a glyph. So Rakar in Deva is uh, written under the below form feature. But uh, the Rakar has its own feature now with, dev, with the Dev2 tag. So little things like this are changing. If you're designing Devnagri typefaces, uh, it's important, I guess. And like I said, the World Ready Composer, always crucial, very important. I'm still surprised how many designers do not know about it. So it's really important to talk about it. Here, uh, here, that was a bug that Ben Jones had spotted within InDesign and the Nukta cliff. So the Nukta is this little dot that will happen at the bottom of a, of a consonant. Here, that's just uh, some, some, of, some of the consonant with this Nukta sign below it. So that's how you input it. You type your glyph and the Nukta, and then you have this combination. The problem here, and that was specifically to InDesign, you would be doing, uh, you, would, you would input uh, a sequence. So the two first lines are completely working, no problem. The problem is the last, is the last line, because somehow things are just not, uh, the par here is just not appearing here when it should be. The letter completely disappeared, and the problem is to input the ya directly with this nukta on the keyboard, because you can input it in different ways. And Ben had found a way to interfere with this little bug with a feature. So now it's working. <laughs> But yeah, you have to find a lot. So it's a lot of investigation at the end. You have to find your problems, and you have to try to, and you have to find a way to solve them, which is not necessarily easy, but fun, I guess. Um, the matra is so yeah. 
And now I'm repeating what John said in a different way, I guess. So, um, yeah, const so contextual substitution are happening. But Ben also developed for this project a very funny tool to just to scan your typeface and see how many different widths you have within, within your typeface, and you would input a tolerance number in the dialog box. And this macro would just give you a suggestion of how many matra you would need for your typeface. Because, yeah, like, like, like Fiona is saying now, like uh, what John had mentioned, we don't necessarily need to have 30 or 60 different matra e, and maybe just a few of them, well, just well, just well designed and well picked, is probably enough. And yeah, localization. Just to uh, to wrap up, it's quite important, I think, to be uh, to be specific um, within the Devnagri script. It's it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of different communities that are using this script, and of course they have their preferences. Here I'm showing you the differences uh, within the figures for the figures between Hindi and Marathi. Um, number four, number five, number eight, number nine are completely different, and it's very important to answer the need of people. We're not here to make their decision; they have to decide. Things are also getting better for localization since the nice names within, within various applications. So Adobe is supporting it now for InDesign. It's really good because it helps us, font manufacturer, to explain to the user, OK, you want to find your localization? It's written Marathi. It's easy. <laughs> OK, so Word still has numbers. Maybe it will happen with the nice names. It would be nice. And all the, all, the Adobe, uh, all the Apple applications also are supporting the nice names. And it's a good, it's a good thing, that's for sure. And the localization is not just visual also. It could be about the syntax. Here, that's just a fake word in Hindi. And you can see this sign with the sort of brev and the dot in the middle. The thing is that in Nepal, they would prefer to write it just with a dot and not with a brev, which is called a kandra. And these sort of details are very important, so you can actually give the right tool to the right people. But things are just slowly evolving, and I guess once we'll get a dictionary for Nepali within, uh, within the Adobe, uh, application things could happen this in this direction in any case and looking ahead of course I have to I have to show you a little bit of variable fonts because I haven't so far and yeah horizon is very wide and why not actually it is working and it's thanks to Bob actually we were able to generate this short video and it's, I'm very happy to see that the evolution keeps on, keeps on changing, and therefore the typefaces also will. And that's it. Thank you.